I lived in Moscow. My family moved to the Boston area when I was seven. You know, they lied to me. They said we were going on a vacation. <laughs> they didn't tell me I wasn't coming back. So then we spent 10 days in Austria and uh, then a couple of months in Italy. <laughs> My main uh, memories of that time is I, uh, I've been running back. I really needed to take a shit. And I was running back and I didn't make it. I shit my pants and I was so embarrassed I didn't tell anyone. I went up to the room, took my underwear off and threw it threw them out the window. I don't think they ever they, they never found out. school I went to New York first I went to Parsons I hated that school I was in a color theory class where the teacher told me that I was unteachable <laughs> it's like fuck you old man you know it means you don't know how to teach <laughs> so in, uh, in 1993 I graduated from the School of the Art Institute moved back to Boston and I was staying with my parents and looking through the paper and I saw this, uh, this ad that said drivers wanted and I followed it and it was to a cab company it was to Checker Cab of Boston. I showed up at this high school in the inner city and took a week of classes and then showed up at the police station. They took my picture and gave me this ID and they gave me a cab, put me out on the street. Stayed there three, three and a half years and was reminded of everything I hated about Boston and moved back to Chicago because I'd liked it here. I had no job, I had no savings. Uh, I just moved here, I had a place to live. Got a job at an art supply store a couple weeks after that. Then, uh, see, restaurants, bars, and eventually in, in, in 03 I went back to driving a cab because I got sick of working for other people. Miss Ohio House, where uh, frat boys bring hookers. I'm sort of amazed at it every once in a while. The endless search for the good time, you know? I mean, people go out, you know, every weekend. Some people go out every night, and uh, some of them seem to be having fun. A lot of them aren't. Some, some people get drunk or high, and they want to fight. But once again, I'm at an advantage because they're drunk or high, and I'm not. I have memories of traffic stops and accidents I've seen all over the damn city. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping all these years of looking out the windows will have lodged in my brain, get something out of it eventually, in terms of visual stuff. Uh, when I started driving a cab again here in, in 03, people would just get in and launch into their life story. It was just trying to reproduce as much of what they did and said as I could. And they didn't have much text in them, mostly they were just drawings. And I called it Hack, because it was short for Hackney Carriage. And I, I would always, and I still, start with a drawing. And I do this drawing, uh, try to do either a portrait of them from memory or some part of the story that I'm going to write about. And that, that helps me into the writing. That got the attention of a guy named Levi Stahl at University of Chicago Press. Uh, and uh, he got in touch with me and eventually told me that he'd be pitching it as a book to the press, and it went from there. You know, I've, I've gotten rear-ended three times. Uh, I've, I've gotten into an actual fucking car chase. A woman tried to run me off the road and chase me down side streets and shit. I, I had passengers on that one, too. They thought it was the greatest cab ride ever. <laughs> I took that as yet one more sign that I gotta get the fuck out of this job. It's the universe telling me you're done.